you know, at first sight, one's bound to say, what a mess. Presumably caused by water damage over a long period of time. But when you open it up, you find Admir Admiralty Library stamped here. Yeah. And then going further on, there's a wealth of very, very good, artistically speaking, drawings. I don't know anything about the, the sitters or anything like that. No. It was a book that was given to my grandfather by his brother. Right. Now, his brother had some connections with the sea. I don't know if he worked in a, uh, a shipping office or something like that. Well, you know, these look like um, gentlemen who would work in a shipping office. They do. Oh. Um, some of them are signed, but they're not signed, I don't think, by the artist, because the, the signatures are different. I think they're signed by the sitters. And they date from, from the 1842, I think it is, to about 1848. Mm -hmm. But you know, to me, they show in a few strokes of the pencil um, a great merit in, in terms of artistic, um, artistic value. They're very, very well drawn indeed. My favourite one is here towards the back. I like that. Again, it's signed, again, John Parsons, the 17th of May, 1848. And I think these, a, a gentleman who worked in a, in a shipping office, and amongst them was an art, an, an amateur artist who could, who could draw. Okay. Now, in terms of value, obviously the condition affects their value yes. considerably. I think um, their worth in this present state, somewhere in the region of around three to four hundred pounds. But I think, had they been in good condition, even though they're by an amateur hand, would have been worth nearer a thousand pounds. Yes, yes. Now on this bell you brought along, we've got on both sides traditional European hunting scenes. And between them, in lesser panels, we've got subjects with Chinese people. Uh, I'm not quite sure what they're doing, but they're sitting there on a terrace. And between, we have this iron red cell pattern ground. And this is, in fact, a bowl made in China to a European order in about 1760. And in those days, you could send out to China, to Canton, where these things were decorated, a print or subject you wanted painted on a bowl, and they would paint it for you and, and, and send it over here. And this is a classic example of this. And it is particularly good, not merely because of what happens on the outside, but the beautiful quality of what happens here. This lovely a mixture between European Rococo ideas and Chinese ideas. And these rich palettes of, palettes of colours, you've got your iron red and your purple and your pink, a pink of Femi Rose. This is a Femi Rose bowl. Mm -hmm. Black and a turquoise green. But very skillfully used all round here and then edged off by this sort of meander pattern. And round the edge of the base, you get a, a, a motif that you find on a lot of Chinese dinner services made for export to Europe. It was given to me by my late aunt, <coughs> and she <coughs> valued it as the, had the most prized possession and thought that I should have it before she passed on. There are two minor problems with this piece. One is that the central subject here is a bit warm. Mm. The, the glaze is flaked off. Mm. And there is a crack. There's a crack here, yes. which unfortunately leaves a little bit missing on the outside. Yes. But still, it is one of the smartest kinds of punch bowl that they made in the East for the European market. The hunting punch bowl. If this was perfect, you'd be talking about three, three to four thousand pounds. In this condition, 16. 1800 pounds. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's a very exciting thing. I see. Yes. Well, that's very interesting.